My name is Giuseppe Magia. I am the director of uh, quality assurance at Continuent. And Continuent is a company that mostly does replication and clustering. So the, this, this uh, uh, topic is very dear to me. Um, there are features that I've been waiting for for a long time. And there are good and bad news about uh, what we are going to, to see today. So I'm going to show you in theory what the features are, and then I'll show you a demo. Um, if we look at uh, advance in, uh, in replication, you see that uh, in the previous version, uh, MySQL 5.5, the only new feature was semi-synchronous replication. By comparison, in, uh, in MySQL 5.6, there is a, a lot of new advance. We have uh, delayed replication. We have the server identified in a unique way. You have a crash-safe uh, slave uh, mechanism. We have multi-threaded slaves and uh, global transaction identifier. So it's a lot of things. This is the uh, largest uh, improvement in replication since, uh, since the history of MySQL. So it's a lot. Let's have a look at uh, the features. OK, we skip uh, semi-synchronous because it's from the, previous, uh, from the previous version. Unless somebody needs to know that. Do you know about semi-synchronous replication? Yes, can I safely skip it? Yeah, okay, so. Delayed replication. This is the, probably is the first feature that was added to MySQL 5.6. Um, it's a way of delaying the application of uh, records to the slave for, for the reason that you may have. The most common reason is that uh, it will uh, defend you against human errors. You know, in, uh, if you are using replication as a sort of uh, first uh, uh, intervention backup, but the you need a backup because you made a mistake, like you deleted your database, then replication will not save you. Because if you delete on the, on the master, it will be deleted on the, on the slave almost instantly. So if you have delayed replication, you have a buffer of time where you can do something. Um, how does it work? It's a very simple syntax. You decide how long you want to delay. Let's say, in this case, you want to delay one minute. One minute maybe is not, uh, is not um, a practical way. Usually, you make a delay of 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, so you say how many seconds you want to delay replication. And you stop the slave, say, change master to master delay equals 60, and then start the uh, slave again. When you do show slave status, you see that uh, there is a new uh, entry in the, in the list of the status, and this entry says SQL delay and the number of seconds that, uh, um, that you set. If replication is running, you will also see how many seconds uh, until the pending um, records are going to be applied. For example, in this case, immediately after I restart the slave, in the master, I create a table. And then in the slave, I see that uh, the SQL delay is 60, and remaining delay is 55 seconds. So if by any chance I made a mistake in that case, and I don't want the, the slave to have that mistake, then I have 55 seconds to stop the slave and preventing this from happening. 
the way you prevent it is just uh, you stop the slave, make a backup of the slave, and then you re reapply to the master. After the delay has expired, the replication engine tells you that uh, it has been applied. So if you see SQL remaining delay null, it means that uh, everything that uh, was in the queue has been applied. So there is nothing remaining waiting for application. This was simple, and it happened a long time ago. So let's see what, what else uh, has been implemented. Immediately after um, replication delay, the server EUUID was uh, uh, implemented. What is it? It's uh, a unique identifier of the server that is uh, created when, the, when you start the server for the first time. There is a question? Would you rather have a question at the end? Or? No, you can ask questions. Uh, is, is the delay from the end of the transaction or the start of the transaction? Does it wait for the transaction to come in? Or does it care? Um, the delay uh, starts from the moment the, the slave receives uh, the transaction. So, you know, in replication, you have uh, one thread that pulls transactions from the master. From that moment, from the moment that the transaction arrives to the slave, uh, there is th then the delay starts to be counted. And usually, this delay um, actually, this is in practice how it works. But um, if you have, uh, if the slave is stopped, then uh, the delay kicked. Uh, kicks uh, anyway. The delay is calculated on a timestamp of the transaction. Now, if, you, if the slave is online, the transaction comes almost instantly. Uh, so for all practical purposes, it's uh, uh, n seconds after the slave has received it, but actually is mm, n seconds after the timestamp in the master. And the timestamp is when the master commits. So if it takes uh, one hour to commit, uh, because it's a large transaction, you will get the timestamp at the end of the transaction. So you will have one hour more to, um, to, to do something during the delay. So I was saying that, that we have this uh, unique identifier if we uh, make a, um, a sandbox uh, using MySQL 5.6, uh, and then we have a look at the show slave status, you see that most of the things are the same as in previous versions, but there is something new that it shows uh, at the end of the uh, show slave status. So you have a long string that is a UUID, that is a unique identifier. It's, this is a common algorithm that is, uh, is known in many um, IT products and uh, programming languages. It's a choice that I really don't like because this means that uh, it's almost impossible to, to do uh, operations manually and you need tools to, to deal with these uh, identification identifiers, but you know it it will uh, ensure that uh, the server is unique uh, across several um, clusters. Probably the most important uh, feature is uh, crash safe slave. Uh, what is the problem? The problem is that uh, when uh, the slave crashes, you have uh, a possibility of, uh, of a um, race condition. The slave, until MySQL 5.5, keeps uh, his uh, position, replication position, in one file. The file is called 
uh, master info and there is another file relay log info now InnoDB is crash safe meaning that uh, uh, if the, the server crashes you can restore everything up to, to the point where you were working and uh, you know that at that point you can uh, uh, resume replication using the information in master info and relay log info but what happens if uh, the crash happened before the slave could update uh, these files so you have a race condition where you are trusting one position that uh, is not uh, in the database so the the new feature is that uh, in uh, MySQL 5.6 you can decide to store this information in a table and the table is in ODB and when you have the information in a table if the slave crashes everything will come back uh, online at the same position when it crashed or it does not so you are ensured that uh, everything will come back uh, safely how do you work on this you have uh, a couple of variables that you have to set when the slave is stopped so you stop the slave and then set this uh, uh, variables to for the repository for master info and relay log info let's see in practice so you do stop slave set global master info repository equals table and set global relay log info repository equals table you can also put these things in the configuration file if you want to use them forever the third thing that uh, you see there is something that we will uh, um, analyze later is for parallel replication but first let's see what happens when you store the information in uh, um, in a table instead of using a file another new piece of information that you have in show slave status it tells you that the master info file is not a file but is a table actually you imply that is a, a table because it says here mysql dot slave master info which is the name of the table that you find in uh, inside mysql we will see this in practice during the demo so when you want to see the information that were previously in uh, in the file master.info now you look at the ta at this table the table has all the information that were before inside the master info and something more at the same in the same way you can see the information that were in uh, relaylog.info in a table named mysql.slave relay log info as you can see you get the information uh, related to the relay log uh, file name and position that you have in, in replication using these two tables if the, the slave crashes it will be able to resume replication without problems uh, okay this uh, is the other table that is the the one about uh, um, parallel replication that we will see in a moment here it is parallel replication is the ability of applying um, transactions in concurrency what happens regularly if you have a replication until mysql 5.5 you have two threads one thread that pulls information from the master and one thread that uh, applies information to the slave in mysql 5.6 you have the possibility of saying i want parallel replication and parallel replication has a few prerequisites for you 
um, first of all, you can uh, parallelize only by schema. So if you, are, um, if you are using only one schema, then parallel application will not help you at all. What does it mean? It means that, uh, if, let's say that you have uh, 10 schemas where the load is more or less the same, uh, MySQL 5.6 will execute uh, one thread per schema, and if your load is uh, evenly distributed, so um, the slave will be able to do the tasks in parallel, more or less like it happened in the master. Hey, Max, we started without you. Um, another important thing to know is that uh, parallel replication in MySQL 5.6 uh, uh, cannot work well if you don't have a MySQL 5.6 master. So if you have a, a situation where you have a 10 databases and you want to use a parallel replication, it does not work if you put a MySQL 5.6 only in the slave because in that case, Replication will slow down instead of uh, speeding up. I tried that myself. Uh, so you, uh, you need uh, uh, to have uh, MySQL 5.6 in the master as well. Otherwise, you are uh, doing something, um, you are doing dam damage to your replication. In addition to this, uh, one thing that you will not find in the manual is that you have to enable the crash safe slave tables uh, if you want to enable parallel replication. I mean, you don't get any error. This is a bug that I, uh, I filed long ago, but uh, they say that it's uh, by design. Anyway, uh, if you don't enable crash safe uh, uh, slave table, Parallel replication will not work, or if it works, you don't see it and you have no way of interacting with that. So how do you enable parallel replication? You say uh, set global slave parallel workers equals and the number of channels. The number of channels should be more or less uh, the same that you have, uh, uh, that the number of uh, uh, schemas that you want to replicate, or more. But you have to, to do some benchmarks, because if you enable too many schemas, then you will have, uh, um, you are wasting resources. If you don't enable enough schemas, then the parallel uh, engine We'll have to loop through the channels to, to get the job done. So try, depending on uh, <clears throat> the amount of resources that you have in your server, you, can, you will find that the same, um, the same number of schemas that you want to replicate, uh, or a few more, is mo uh, almost always the right number. When you enable parallel replication, uh, the speed of replication is uh, about uh, four to five times faster. So if it takes uh, one hour to, uh, sorry, if it takes um, um, four hours uh, for a single threaded slave to um, absorb the lag that you had for a slave, parallel replication will do that uh, in one hour only. So the other very important feature for uh, MySQL 5.6 is uh, global transaction identifier. What is it first? Uh, you know that in replication you identify transactions uh, by position inside a binary log. When you uh, when you switch roles between master and slave, or, you, or when you fail from a, a master to a slave because uh, the master crashed, you need to identify which, which transactions were applied to the slaves, promote a slave, then go to, to the other slave, see 
to which position they were arrived, try to determine in the new uh, master to which position that corresponds and set the replication to the right position. This is a long, uh, long task and most of the times uh, you can make mistakes. <coughs> Instead, if you have global transaction identifiers, there is no problem because the transactions are identified by a single number that is the same across all the servers in the replication cluster. So if you have a number 13 in the master, it will be number 13 in all the slaves. And if you have a hierarchical replication, it will be number 13 even if uh, you have a slave of a slave. Now, there are a few things that you need to be aware of if you want to use global transaction identifiers. It doesn't work out of the box. You need to uh, enable it. If you want to enable it, you need to set four things in all servers, in the master and in the slaves. So you have to say log slaves, slave updates, GTID mode equals on, and enforce GTID consistency. Uh, why do you need three, these things? Okay, log bin means uh, enable the binary logs. Of course, if you don't do that, not, there is no replication. Log slave updates, you have to enable this also in the master. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Why in the master? Because Global Transaction ID assumes that you want this feature be, uh, to, uh, to make a switch between a master and a slave easier. And you cannot do that if log slave updates is not enabled. So if you make a slave become a master and a master become a slave, the master cannot be a slave with Global Transaction Identifier if you cannot um, log its updates. Notice that if you do log slave updates, it means that you, have, you are doubling the binary logs. So you, in, a, in the slave, you will have the relay logs and the binary logs. So be aware of this. This will cost you a tiny bit of performance. GTID mode equals on, and this is simple. I mean, it means I want um, global transaction identifiers to be enabled. Now, enforce GTID consistency. This is the tricky part. It means that there are things that you cannot do, things that are not transactionally safe. What are these things? You cannot uh, do uh, transactions mixed between uh, InnoDB and uh, non-transactional tables. So if you have a, a transaction that includes one MyISAM table, uh, the server will not commit, will make an error in the master itself, so it will not allow you to, to, to run that. If you have temporary tables within transactions, it will not allow you to do it. And if you have a create table select, also that it's forbidden. So whenever you do, you run one of these uh, statements, you will, uh, uh, you will get an error in the master telling you that this is not safe and you're not allowed to do it while global transaction identifiers uh, uh, are enabled. Another thing, uh, non-transactional updates uh, uh, doesn't mean that you cannot use uh, MyASA. It was uh, uh, like that until MySQL 5.6.8. Uh, then it was changed. Now you can uh, update a MyASA table only if you are, this is the only part inside a transaction. So if you are using auto commit equals one, you can update a MyISAM table. Why was this done? Because otherwise you cannot uh, um, change the transactional tables 
uh, sorry, the, the ground tables uh, to uh, enforce security. You know that uh, when MySQL ships, uh, it has a root without password and a few uh, anonymous users. If you want to remove them and global transactional identifiers are enabled, until MySQL 5.6.8, uh, you could not do it. Then in MySQL 5.6.9, it was changed, and now you can uh, <coughs> run these uh, uh, things. Um, so if you want to start uh, your server with uh, global transaction identifiers, you need to put all these things uh, in your uh, um, configuration file. And be aware that before MySQL 5, 6, 9, not 8, because this is in the future, eventually, it, the name was different. So if you were using this <coughs> uh, feature uh, with a beta MySQL, be aware that the name was different. Before it was named Disable GTID Unsafe Statements. So let's test uh, this uh, uh, global transactional identifiers. What do you see in practice? In practice, you create uh, something, you do an update into, in the master, so, for example, you will create a table and then look at the binary log events. In the binary log, you will see <coughs> immediately uh, before the event, you will see a session GTID next equals, and then you have a composite field. The long list of uh, unpronounceable things is uh, the the server UUID. And then there is a colon and one. So this one is the global transaction ID. And this long thing is the server identifier. It, it works. <clears throat> Do I like it? No. Do you like it? I don't think so. It's uh, something that uh, requires specialized tools to, to work with, and it will make your life miserable if you, if you have to, to find out manually what is going on. But anyway, let's uh, continue. In show slave status, you will see the list of global transactional identifiers that were retrieved and executed and you will see them as a list of uh, IDs coming from a given master. Now this was probably done in, because in the future they want to support multiple masters. Anyway, the way it is uh, listed right now, it makes it more difficult to, um, to understand. Uh, okay, let's talk about some problems. If you have seen uh, MySQL 5.6 uh, uh, presentation, you will see bullet points uh, telling you that uh, there is an automatic failover. Actually, there is no such a thing. If you want to do automatic failover with MySQL 5.6, you need to take the MySQL utilities, use the MySQL failover utility, and then do the failover on your own. Meaning that it's not automatic, it's automatic if you make it automatic. So the thing that MySQL 5.6 does is uh, making failover easier and smooth, uh, much, much more, uh, much easier than uh, the MySQL 5.5, but it's not automatic at all. Also, you, will, you may see some bullet points telling you that uh, MySQL has uh, multi-source replication. This multi-source replication is uh, actually a script 
that makes a round robin replication. So if you have many masters from which you want to replicate, there is a script that stops replication, does a change master two to another slave, starts replication, <coughs> and after a given amount of time, will change again to another master. Uh, why I have a bone with this? Because this is a script that uh, when I was working for MySQL, I did as a proof of concept and nobody cared about that. And then I found it in a, in a slide, so I kind of uh, uh, resent it. Let's talk about, talk about problems. It's noisy on installation. What does it mean, noisy? Uh, it means when, when you start MySQL 5.6 for the first time, when you install the database, it will uh, print uh, uh, a huge list of uh, information that is uh, not useful to you. And this information will go to the standard error. Now, when uh, the information goes to the standard error, it is redirected to the error log if you, uh, if you have such a thing or to the screen. So if you are a DBA and you are used to <coughs> deal with things that uh, go to the standard error with uh, uh, a warning and then you rush from your home at four in the morning to fix a problem, you will be uh, surprised to see that uh, it was just uh, the regular messages that uh, MySQL 5.6 does when installing itself. So it's very noisy for no reason at all. <coughs> so it's also noisy in the error log. In the error log you will see things that are not errors just like you see uh, things that are noisy when you install. Again, DBAs are not pleased because uh, the, they have uh, probably monitors on the error log that where is, when there is a new line means something that needs to be taken care of. Now, instead, the error log is cluttered with information that is not errors at all. Um, the parallel slave doesn't work out of the box. We mentioned this before. If you want the parallel slave to work, you need to enable also the crash safe slave, otherwise it will not work. Um, global transaction identifiers does not support all the statements or all the engines. If you are mixing transactions and uh, <coughs> myism, it will not work. So if you have a legacy application that were working that way, GTIDs do not work. So the features are not well in integrated, and I'm going to show you this uh, in the demo. Uh, Crash Safe Slave was designed and implemented before GTIDs were started to be designed. So. What we have here is a crash safe slave that works, but doesn't work well with GTIDs. And the same for parallel application. Parallel application was designed after uh, crash safe slaves and before GTIDs. So the three things don't work together. If you need only one, you are, you are okay. If you need all three of them, and you probably should if you are using a parallel application, you, you don't get that. Um, broken compatibility, what is it? The simplest thing is this. When you uh, have uh, one uh, shell script that has uh, MySQL minus uh, U username minus P password, then MySQL 5.6 will give you a warning. <clears throat> will tell you that uh, using passwords on the command line is uh, unsafe. Okay. However, you cannot disable this uh, warning at all. So if you have a script uh, that you use for testing, like I do, I use a script to test if a password 
works before assigning it and I have a ton of scripts that uh, work that way when I start a new server. Uh, this script and now they are broken because instead of uh, having a simple return, I get a warning that I should not. Finally, if you try using MySQL dump with, uh, when GTID is enabled, you have problems. <clears throat> you have problems because uh, either you uh, re uh, replay the dump to a server without the GTID, or you have to adjust the GTID inside the server when you get a, a MySQL dump from a server that was using GTID. I will show you this in the demo. Before we go to the demo, any questions? Yes, Andy? I might have missed something, but is there, um, are there changes that make multi-master replication work better or easier? There is no multi-master replication in MySQL 5.6. Uh, I mean, except the, the only thing that you could do before. In uh, MySQL, until MySQL 5.5, actually, until MySQL 5.6, the only multi-master that you can do is master to master when you uh, have one uh, um, master be the slave of another master, or you can have a, a circular replication. This has not changed. Um, actually, there is a s small change, but it was in MySQL 5.5, that uh, allows you to skip one master from a circular replication uh, cluster, but in uh, in my SQL 5.6, uh, nothing has changed uh, about that. Uh, it was something else that you had in mind? No. Okay. So, I'm going to use MySQL Sandbox to create uh, 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 one master and two slaves with my SQL 5.6. using MySQL 5.6.10, which is the GA release. <clears throat> I told you before that MySQL uh, 5.6 is chatty when it installs. It means that uh, uh, until I fix the MySQL sandbox uh, to not listen to the chatty, when you install the uh, MySQL uh, 5.6 in replication, you had something like 10 pages of screen going through and you had no way of seeing if there was an error or not, because if there, is, there was an error, it was lost inside the, the rest of uh, useless uh, uh, information coming by. So uh, I don't know if you have ever seen MySQL Sandbox. It's a thing that allows you to uh, create uh, um, <clears throat> several instances of MySQL in the same server. In this case, I'm using my laptop. And inside this uh, sandbox, uh, we have uh, the usual tools that you see in, uh, in this, kind, in this um, case. So you have uh, one script for the master, one script for each of the slaves, and uh, um, scripts that uh, tell you, um, that let you do several things to the cluster at all. For example, start all of them, stop all of them, uh, and see the replication status like this. You see, it tells you that uh, replication is running in the first master, in the first slave, and in the second slave. Now, in addition to this, there is uh, one uh, script that is enabled GTAD that uh, MySQL Sandbox creates for you automatically when you do replication with MySQL 5.6. When you do this, it will uh, enable GTID using the uh, variables that we have uh, seen in the slides before. 
so it will enable GTID and it will also enable uh, the crash safe slave. Enable GTID. Now it will stop the, the slaves and the master and restart them with the new options. Now let's check replication again. Replication is working and we can go inside and have a look at what is happening. So show slave status. In show slave status, we see that uh, everything is the way we expect it. We have this monster here that is the master UUID. <coughs> um, and there is nothing in the matter of uh, GTID set retrieved or executed because after we restarted the servers, we still haven't uh, sent any, any transaction across. So let's see what happens when we create one transaction in the master. Create a table Boston We go to the slave, show slave status, and it tells me that uh, at, it has retrieved one transaction from this master and executed the same transaction. So far, so good. Now, the first problem comes when we want to have a look at the tables that uh, are there for the crash safe status. So, use MySQL, um, select star from slave master info. Now, you look inside and sadly you don't see anything that looks like a global transaction identifier. So the only way of uh, keeping track of what is happening here is by looking at uh, binary logs and position. So this is, why, this, is, this is happening because global transaction identifiers were designed after this feature was implemented. The same thing happens if we look at the relay log info. You have the relay log file and position, but nothing about uh, global transaction identifiers. Now, let's try to do something with parallel replication. I have one script here that will uh, uh, shoot replication very quickly. That is the warning that I was talking to you about. Um, okay. Anyway, if we look at the relay log info, actually the, the master info, we see that uh, the master log position is increasing a lot. Show process, show process list. Uh, it's too quick. Anyway, we see that there is only one thread working in replication. Now we enable 10 threads and we do like this. Stop slave. Set global. Slave. Parallel. Workers. Equals 10. And start slave. I get one warning.
the warning says that uh, <clears throat> I may have trouble if uh, when, when I stop and restart uh, replication in some cases. It's true, but it's nothing that you should be worried about. What you should be worried about is the situation of your uh, show slave status. Now, the show slave status tells you the list of global transaction IDs that uh, are, are, are getting executed. So, what you see here is the list of global transaction IDs that uh, are processed at this moment in different threads. So it's wonderful to see that you have many threads that are working on your transaction. So you know that uh, your transactions, instead of going in one single line, they are in 10 lines. However, what the hell is happening in each line is a mystery. Let's try to find out. You have uh, select um, one table that is dedicated to parallel replication from slave worker info and here is what you get now the thing that is really frustrating for the DBA is first there is no global transaction ID here second there is no database. You know that uh, um, parallel replication works by schema, and there is no information about the schema that is being used. So you just know that there is this thread that is using um, my, uh, data that comes from MySQL bin 002, and it's a position 4593 But which global transaction ID this corresponds, we don't know. And which database is working, we don't know. And uh, lastly, there is this thing that is checkpoint group bitmap, which was not there in MySQL 5.6.8. Uh, it was introduced recently. That is non-printable characters. Uh, so probably they are useful because otherwise they wouldn't be there. But they are unreadable. And whenever you print them, it will... Uh, screw up your screen. So this is why I say that uh, MySQL 5.6 is a wonderful uh, um, bunch of novelties, but uh, put together is extremely dangerous to use. So if you need to use a, um, crash safe slave, go for it. If you need to use Global transaction IDs, go for it, but don't expect to match, to, to play well with the rest of the features. Um, there was something else that uh, we were supposed to, to look at. Well, I can show you. We have about 10 minutes till the next session starts. No, let's. Uh, Let's see if there are questions. No questions? OK, I, I want to tell you just for the, for the record that uh, <clears throat> there is a product the named the Tungsten Replicator, which does all these things. But unlike MySQL 5.6, it was designed from the ground up to use global transaction IDs and parallel replication and crash safe slave uh, all together. So if you do parallel replication inside, uh, my, uh, inside Tungsten, you will, uh, uh, you will see for each uh, thread the database where the, the the transaction is happening, uh, the global transaction ID and the bin log and position all together. So if something happens, you will have tools to, to look at that. Uh, instead, for MySQL 5.6, this 
feature is great, meaning that uh, it crunches uh, uh, transaction really fast. It's five times faster than a single, uh, single thread uh, replication. But if something goes wrong, you are on your own. There is nothing in the tools provided, uh, provided by either MySQL or third party yet that can help you uh, dealing with uh, uh, parallel replication in this uh, less than desirable implementation. Questions? Thank you.